Hi, this is a video explanation of the Maze Runner game. And the idea behind the Maze Runner game is that not only are you moving around an item and bumping into walls, but you can also go through multiple different rooms. Now when you go ahead and run this game, it looks something like this. The player there is the white square, and you can go through multiple rooms. Some rooms are easier than others, and that's about it. So you can go ahead and add monsters or whatever else that you want. You can go back the other way, have coin to collect, that type of thing. So how do you get this to work? The game looks something like this. Up here at the top, we of course import Pi Game and then define all our colors. Nothing terribly new there. Next up, we've got our wall class right here. And the wall class is used for every wall that we've got and I'm constructing the wall giving it both a XY of the top left, the width and the height of the wall, and the color. This is really like almost every other wall type of sprite that I've got in my other examples so I don't spend too much time going over this. If you need to take a look at some of the other examples to see how this works in more detail. The player class is where things get a bit more complex. We've got the player class that drives from sprite. The player class has a change x and change y. We modify that based upon when the user presses a key on the keyboard to get the player to move. The player has an init and the player's sprite is created a whole lot like the wall sprite. We just basically fill in a color for it and set the initial location of the player. The change speed will be called whenever we have a key down and we'll modify the speed. Basically, if the person hits the right, we'll have a positive, and when they let up on the key, we'll end up going back to zero and subtracting it out. This move function works a lot like the updates that we've had in our move with walls example, but we are creating a move function here, not an update, and we are passing it in a separate parameter with walls. The move function really needs to know where the walls are so that if the player bumps into the wall, we can check that and not move there. Now there are other ways we could do this. We could have the wall as an attribute of player, but since we're flipping between rooms, I like to have the walls passed in when I'm moving. That's my preference in this case. This does the move left or right, and then we check to see if we actually hit every, anything. If we did, we back the user back up to the edge of the wall, and this covers up and down. This class represents each room. We don't actually create an instance of the room class, but each room that we have derives from it. Really, there's not too much to it. We've got a list of walls for this room, and we've got a list of enemies. Now, I don't actually have, in my particular example, enemies that are wandering around the rooms. This could also be like coins or something to collect but I've put it in here as a placeholder so if you do have enemies or you do have coins to collect or anything else that exists in your rooms you need to have a separate list for it inside of the room class. I used to have people just create functions that would create the room when you went into it but the problem is when you left the room and then came back then the room was reset and the enemies weren't where they were before. If you collected coins and they would respawn and it really didn't provide for a good playing experience. By putting this inside of a class we can keep the list for every single room really easily. The init that we have right here this will just create the list. So they start off with none and then we go ahead and create the groups inside of the init. You don't want to create them here. This is the first room that you enter in and the init basically goes ahead and calls the parent constructor which would be this so this gets run and then after that we go ahead and I've got an array of walls and then I loop through each wall and I actually create the wall and add it to the wall list this is the same wall list that we created up here in the base class this x y width height color I like having them in a list here because it's really easy for me to modify this list in order to add and remove things. Room 2 works pretty similarly. Room 3 and then we've got our main program. The main program is called down here when we actually run it. So this calls the main program. 
I don't always use the main function, but if you'll note, it is the more proper way of running a Python program rather than throwing everything as a global. Okay, so this is our main program. We initialize, that's not new. We create the screen, that's fine. We set the caption, we create the player, we add it to moving sprites. Here's where we actually create our rooms. We've got a list of rooms here. I create the room and I append it to the room list. I create the room, I append it to the room list. You don't need to do room one, room two, room three, or create different variable names here. We're just reusing this variable. After we get done with the room variable, we don't need it again. What we're going to use will be the rooms list. After I've created all the rooms, I have a variable called current room number. I set it equal to zero, and I have a variable for the current room we're in. This is basically just a number, it's not the room. This is the entire room class. It's got all the lists. And I set it equal to whatever room number we are in out of the room list. This works kind of like before. I got my while loop, process key commands, and here I check. If the player's rectangle is equal to negative 15, completely slid off the screen, and I, I check. If the current room number is equal to zero, so my rooms look something like this. Here's room zero. And if the room is equal to zero, then they're going to wrap around to room two. If the room is equal to two and they're going off the left edge, we're going to go to room one. Otherwise, if it's not zero and it's not two, it must be one. Then if we wrap it off, we're going to go to zero. So in this case, we don't actually go to yet another room there. We just wrap around. So it's a wrap around type of environment that I've got for the rooms. And it works the same going the other way. I set the current room number. This doesn't actually change the room, but it does point to where we're at. This changes the room. And that allows me to flip from room to room to room. And you can keep all sorts of lists in here, not just the wall, but you can keep lists of coins, enemies, objects to pick up, whatever you want. Just add it to the base room class and then create it every time you've got a room. And that defines what the rooms are. This actually creates the rooms. There you go. That's a short introduction to how the Maze Runner program works.